The Sith Empire was a force of dominance, an authoritarian state forged from militarism, slavery and the dark side of the force. United under a single emperor and his dark council, ruled by the four sensitive members of the Sith Order and supported by countless loyal citizens. We already covered the history of the Galactic Republic, so if you don't know how it was formed, go check that video by clicking the link in the description. In today's video, we'll dive into the history of the Sith Empire, Republic's notorious adversary, and learn how it rose to power. Let's begin. The Sith Empire was ultimately born from a rift in the Jedi Order. Approximately 7000 years before Episode 4 A New Hope, a group of ancient Jedi led by Master Ajunta Pal discovered new ways of the Force, the ones that would allow them to create and shape life. The Jedi Order soon became feared of such power and deemed it as an abomination of the Force. As a result, the Jedi High Council forbade these teachings, branding Ajunta a pawn of the dark side of the Force. Angered by this decision, Ajunta and his followers declared war on the Jedi Order, which would be later called a Hundred Year Darkness. During this conflict, the exiled Jedi raised an army of dark side creations to fight the Jedi. However, Ajunta and his followers were eventually defeated and forced into exile. When the war ended, the dark Jedi retreated from Republic space and made their fateful discovery of the planet of Korriban. When the exiles landed on Korriban, they were greeted by clans of violent, force-sensitive species known as the Sith. The Dark Jedi impressed the Sith with their power of the dark side, making them gods in the eyes of this Sith species. So the Sith began to serve Ajunta and his followers, making Ajunta Pal the first Sith Lord. Dark Jedi remained on Korriban for years. With vast resources and an obedient Sith army, they built a mighty civilization that formed a bedrock of the Sith Empire. Generations passed as the Jedi interbred with the Sith, eventually becoming indistinguishable from the Korriban natives. Together, they were known only as Sith, powerful dark side warriors and rulers of the Sith Empire. The Sith Empire grew in might for nearly 2000 years, focusing on fortifying their empire. Under the leadership of Sith Lord Marka Ragnos, the Sith enjoyed strength and prosperity in a time known as the Golden Age of the Sith. But when Marka Ragnos died, the Golden Age came to an end. Two Sith Lords, Naga Sado and Ludo Kresh, fought to fill the sudden power vacuum until their power struggle was interrupted by two hyperspace explorers. These explorers were human beings Gaff and Jory Darragon. During their scout throughout the galaxy, they stumbled across Korriban and the seat of the Sith Empire's power. Sith deemed Gaff and Jory Republic spies and imprisoned siblings on the world of Zayast to evade execution. But in a bid to seize power, the Sith Lord Naga Sado liberated the prisoners and planted evidence to suggest they had been rescued by the Republic. The Sith were eager for war. Naga Sado stoked their rage, rallied the Sith under his banner and prepared to launch a preemptive strike against the Republic. As the sister managed to escape, leaving her brother behind, the Sith Empire followed. Under Naga Sado's command, the Sith Empire launched a devastating surprise assault against the Republic. While the Imperial fleet attacked Republic forces on multiple fronts, Sado orchestrated the attack from his meditation sphere over the star Primus Golet. His powerful force ability called Battle Meditation strengthened the Imperial forces. He also used his powers to create illusions, bolstering the Empire's fleets with imaginary numbers of unstoppable magnitude. The Republic despaired and scrambled to defend itself against this unexpected onslaught. The Sith Empire's assured victory was ultimately broken by betrayal. Gav Darragon, one of the space travelers who had stayed on Korriban, had since become Naga Sado's apprentice. He turned against Naga Sado at the height of the war, 
breaking his master's battle meditation just long enough to alert the Republic of the Sith sorcery. The Republic quickly regrouped and drove back the Sith invaders. Naga Sado ordered a retreat as his offensive crumbled and the Republic descended on his position. To annihilate his pursuers and cover his escape, Naga Sado set in motion a chain of events that imploded the star of Primus Golet. His apprentice died in the destruction as Naga Sado fled back to Korriban. When Naga Sado returned to Korriban, he discovered an ambush waiting for him. Ludo Kresh, rival to Sado and challenger to the Sith throne, was determined to destroy Naga Sado once and for all. The two Sith fleets clashed over Korriban and Naga Sado defeated Ludo Kresh to emerge triumphant. But his victory was soon thwarted as the Republic fleet arrived and destroyed the remnants of the Sith Empire. Sado abandoned his allies and fled from Korriban forever. The great hyperspace war and the destructive emergence of the Sith Empire struck fear into the heart of the Republic. Shaken by its near destruction and wary of the corrupting influence of the Sith survivors, the Republic set out to destroy all remnants of the Sith Empire. On the orders of Supreme Chancellor Paltimo, the Republic strike squads captured surviving Sith and demolished their centers of power. Jedi recovered Sith teachings and cleansed the dark side blight from the galaxy. Republic squadrons flew bombing runs over Korriban and other Sith worlds, burying their civilization in rubble. But unknown to the Republic, they failed to stomp out the cinders of the Empire. In time, the hateful Sith survivors would build into a raging inferno and threaten to consume the galaxy once more. As the Republic desecrated the glory of the Sith Empire, the survivors gathered under a powerful leader known only as the Sith Emperor. The Sith listened in rapturous awe as the Emperor promised a day when the Sith would return to conquer the galaxy, avenge their fallen allies and secure the Republic's ruin. But to achieve their revenge, the Empire would first have to abandon Korriban and deceived the Republic into assuming its extinction. The Emperor boarded a small fleet with the remnants of the Sith Empire and the Sith retreated into unknown space. After decades of drifting through space, the Sith Empire discovered the world of Dromund Kaas. Covered in hostile jungles and violent storms, Dromund Kaas provided the perfect site for the Empire to forge its new capital and raise a society built for war. Acting on the visions of the Sith Emperor, the newly appointed Dark Council directed the Empire's growth. Driven by promises of vengeance and the Emperor's assured plans, heroes emerged from Imperial ranks to lead the march to war. One such hero was Odil Viking, the respected leader and father of the Imperial military. After carving a footprint into Dromund Kaas for the site of the capital city, Viken designed the training tactics for the Imperial Army and oversaw the construction of its massive fleet. Though he recognized the Empire would not achieve its retribution during his lifetime, Viken stoked the fires of vengeance among the people. After his death on a military campaign, Viken's torch was lit in the jungles of Dromund Kaas. Its eternal flame is a symbol of the Empire's undying dedication to revenge. For hundreds of years, the Empire amassed incredible strength while the Emperor secretly plotted from seclusion, his life extended by Sith sorcery. Generations of Imperials lived, worked and died to hone the Empire's military power. As the years dragged on, hopeful whispers in military training camps guessed that they would be the lucky generation to battle the Republic. But in truth, not even the Dark Council could predict when the Emperor would deem the Empire to ripe for retribution. And here we'll make a time jump, because there were so many events before the Great Galactic War, and if we cover them in this video, it will be a few hours long. So we'll skip Revan and Malak, Mandalorian Wars and many other events and jump straight to war between the Republic and the Empire. After more than a thousand years of waiting, the Emperor announced that the time for revenge had come. 
Millions of soldiers mobilized and a colossal fleet gathered near Drummond Cars. Orders were passed down by the Dark Council. Every member of the Empire had a role to play in the annihilation of the Republic. Fueled by immeasurable pride, wrathful vengeance and a millennium of pent-up bloodlust, the Sith Empire launched its surprise attack. The Great War between the Sith Empire and Galactic Republic lasted almost three decades. Warriors and commanders such as Darth Malgus, Darth Engrel and Grand Moff Kilrun blazed a path of ruin through Republic worlds across the galaxy. Through every ruthless victory and crushing defeat, the Empire's hatred of the Republic never faded. And when the war finally ended in a tense truce, the Emperor withdrew to prepare for a mysterious calling while his Empire began gathering its strength for one final devastating blow that would annihilate the Republic once and for all. During the Sith Empire's military campaign, many battles were fought. In the course of this conflict named as Great Galactic War, Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire would fight for the right to control the galaxy. This conflict would end after approximately 30 years with the sacking of Coruscant and the following treaty. The Great Galactic War was a decisive victory for the Sith Empire, which would later serve as the beginning of the new conflict, known as the Cold War. This was a brief history of the Sith Empire. We'll cover more battles and events of the Old Republic era in the future, but that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching, check the video about the origins of the Galactic Republic, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!